so for you. This is it. Hold this. Are you sure nobody's home? Of course I'm sure. Mr. Olivia did not. Now, they always go away on holiday this time, yeah? There's only the butler and he looks way at the back. Oh, Lord. I hope I remember the combination. I'll keep my eyes peeled whenever the old boy opened it. Oh, oh, damn. Hold that light steady. Sorry. There. Watch this. What did I tell you? Yeah, you hold that one. I'll see you now where that, that's a beauty. I'll get these. Oops. Lucy, they must be worth a fortune. Of course, they're worth a fortune. Thank heavens she didn't put them in the bank. For me. Come on, love. Let's get out of here. What's a hurry? We've got all the time in the world, no? Lucy! What are you doing here? What have you been up to at the safe? Get him! Oh! Let's get out of here. I, I can't help that. Anyway, he hasn't a clue who you are. Now, look. If I get caught, hold on to my half of stuff till I get out of here. And take the bag. Come on. <laughs> Lucy? Oh, no thanks, sir. Looks like Tom's found a new interest in life. Yeah. He isn't the only guy in the world. He might be, the way you're looking at Anne. You know, I'd say you could cheerfully strangle her. Why should I be mad at Anne? We're friends. Well, as a matter of fact, we'd just be out together. I never really cared about Tom anyway. What about a cup of coffee, Sam? Okay. I thought you were going to stand me up. Sorry. I just went for a long walk. Trouble was, the longer I walked, the longer it took me to get back. Forgive me. Coffee? Thanks. Don't go away. Hmm? You say you recognize one of them? Uh, yes, sir. A young person named Lucy Owens. She must have known the combination, so the safe wasn't forced. No fingerprints either. Did you get a look at the other girl's face? Oh, no, sir. You see, she stayed in the shadows. <laughs> That she was the one who hit me, might have killed me too. Don't worry, we'll tap her. Can you tell me what this Lucy Owens looks like? Oh, yes, sir, I remember her well. You see, she used to hold a position here as downstairs maid. I see. She was about 20 years of age, blonde, blue eyes, spoke with a distinct Cockney accent. You're wasting your time, Lucy, and ours. The butler identified you. You're lucky he's still alive. No, I didn't hit him. We know that. It was the other girl, but we want her name. We'll find out sooner or later, but you could be a big help to us. 
Now, what happened to that jewelry? She took it. Who's she? The girl who was with me. Ann Turner. But that's ridiculous, Inspector. The fact remains, Mr. Turner, that Lucy Owens did name your daughter as her accomplice. But I hardly know her. I'm afraid that doesn't tell you what she says. Then she's lying. I don't know why, but she is. I didn't even see her tonight. Then where were you? Well, most of the evening till about ten, I was out walking. Alone? Yes. Did anybody else see you? I told you I was alone. So we only have your word for that. Isn't my daughter's word good enough, Inspector? I'm afraid not, sir. I'm sorry, but I'll have to search the house. On whose authority? I have a search warrant here, sir. But there's nothing here that doesn't belong to my father or myself. All the same, if you don't mind. It doesn't matter, dear. There's nothing here that could possibly interest them. But I don't understand. I just don't understand it. Why me? It's all a mistake, my dear. They'll see. You know, Miss Turner, you could save us a lot of trouble if you'd tell us where that jewelry is. I swear I don't know anything about it. Now, we'll find somebody who saw my daughter out walking tonight, Inspector. I'm sure of it. I shouldn't worry, my dear. It'll be all right. I think we've got something here, sir. The bracelet was in the pocket. Mm-hmm. Whose coat is this? It's mine. And this? I couldn't swear it was she, of course, sir. But she's about the same size and build as the young person who hit me. I never saw you before in my life. You've got to believe me. Then where did you get that bracelet? I don't know. What did you do with the rest of the stuff? I don't know. I don't know anything about it. All right, if you will persist in being difficult. And Turner, it's my duty to warn you that from now on, everything you say will be written down and may be used in evidence against you. Well, I got three years. Yeah, I know. Were you in court? And denied it right up to the end. Denied she ever had anything to do with Lucy. She told me they were friends. I've never known Anne to lie. <laughs> Found the bracelets in her coat pocket, didn't they? She didn't have an alibi, not that she could prove. I wonder what she did with the rest of the rocks. She didn't do it. All right, all right. Three years. Tall, they don't usually keep them that long. Just hold them till they think they're fit to go. Anne won't have it so bad. Borsals aren't like regular prisons, you know. They still have iron bars and high walls around them, don't they? Oh, not if she goes to one of these modern places like Wilsham. Oh, uh, open borstals, they call them. No bars, no walls, nothing. <laughs> Why, you could practically walk out without anybody seeing you. <laughs> it's just a reform institute. Sign up here, girls. Straighten up, please. Take your hands out of your pocket. Thank you. Now, girls, you're going in to see the matron. If you're spoken to, you give your name, number, and sentence. That is all. And you address the matron and all the wardresses as ma'am. Is that clear? Yes. Yes, what? Yes, ma'am. Why? Now, if you obey the rules and regulations of Wilson. The time can pass quickly and pleasantly. If not, it can be rather disagreeable. Can't it, Owens? Now we'll go in and see the matron. Wait a minute. Come in. The new arrivals are here, ma'am. Oh, good. Well, show them in, Miss Smith. Come in, girls. Stand at attention in front of the matron's desk here. Thank you, Miss Smith. I know none of you are very happy at being here, but all the same, I want to welcome you to Wilsham. I'm sure that some of you are frightened at the thought of the time that you're going to spend here, but you needn't be. As you saw when you were brought here, there are no bars on the windows, 
and no walls surrounding the buildings. Does that mean we can leave whenever we want to? Quiet. Speak to Matron only when spoken to. That's quite all right, Miss Smith. No, you must serve your sentence here. But while you are here, you're on your honor not to leave without permission. What is your name? Edna Boyce, ma'am. Um, number 638. Two years for housebreaking, ma'am. Well, Edna, I want you and all the girls to realize that we're fully aware of the temptation to run away. All you have to do is to walk through the gates without being seen. It's quite simple. But let me warn you that nobody stays away for long. Sooner or later, they are brought back. And when they are, they are not only severely punished, but in most cases, their sentence is extended. Is that quite clear? Yes, sir. What was your work before you came here? I was unemployed. Name, number and sentence. And you are to address the matron as a man. Lucy Owens, 639, up for three years, robbery with violence. Ma'am. Well, Lucy, we'll try and teach you a trade here. But for the next few months, until we find out your capabilities, you will work with a group of girls making mailbags. Our one object here is to prepare you for a useful and law-abiding life when you've completed your sentence. Of course, some of you may have had trades before, and if we have such work here, it will be given to you so that you can keep up your skill. What was your job? I was a chorus girl. Doris Ames, 640, two years for habitual delinquency, ma'am. Yes, well, I think you'll realize that we haven't at Wilsham the facilities for your uh, profession, but we'll find something for you to do. There's one last point. We are here to help you. Sometimes things may go wrong that are beyond our control. And if something should happen to you, don't hold it as a secret and increasing worry. Go and tell your wardress. Or come to me. I'm always available. All you have to do is to ask permission of Miss Smith, the head wardress. Any questions? No. Yeah. Very well, then, Miss Smith. We'll show you to your dormitories. And good luck to all of you. This way, girls. Down to the left. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Line up. End of the dormitory. where you'll sleep. You can choose any unoccupied bed, the ones with the rolled up mattresses. You make them right away, and I want them neat. When I say neat, that is exactly what I mean. You have ten minutes to make your beds, and then you come to the workroom with me. You work immediately. There's uh, no loafing here. Very on. You frame me. Who, me? I want to know why. Haven't you figured it out yet, Miss Turner? What did I ever do to you? I hardly know you. But you know Tom Harris. Tom? What's he got to do with this? Him and me used to do a pretty strong line together. Now, don't tell me you didn't know that. He used to take you out occasionally, but he told me it wasn't serious. Well, maybe he wasn't, but I was. Look, I don't like losing boyfriends, especially to types like you. Tom has a right to choose any girl he likes, and just because he chose me... Chose you? Ha, that's rich! You mean you're pinching I me. did not. He just changed his mind, that's all. Well, perhaps he'll change his mind again in three years. I knew I didn't have a chance the moment the butler saw me. But I'm going to make damn sure you don't have him to yourself while I'm in here. But that's not fair. <gasps> you're breaking my heart. It's all going to tell the truth. The matron! No, you don't tell me! You don't tell me! You don't tell me! You makers on our hands. Well, we'll soon put a stop to that. Take the other girls to the workroom when they've finished making their beds. These two are coming with me. Very well, Miss. Come on. Jump to it, Owens. 
must say I'm shocked that you should have caused trouble so soon after coming here. She started it. Please, ma'am, I'd like Quiet. to explain. Just a moment, Miss Smith. Explain what? She's a liar. She lied about me you and I was... here because a judge, after hearing the facts of your case, found you guilty. So much for that. I think perhaps it would be better if we forgot this. Normally, I would have punished you severely. But as it's your first day here, I let the warning suffice. But if it happens again, I shall have to put you into solitary confinement. Is that understood? You were asked a question. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You may take them to work, Miss Smith. Yes, ma'am. This way. <laughs> Wait, girls. Now, if matron's warning wasn't enough, I'm warning you. Any more trouble out of either of you, and you'll be sorry for it, I assure you. Especially you. Oh, I know how to deal with her. Take your hands out of your pockets. And get back to work. Yes, Turner. You're different, aren't you? You come here and you put on airs and pretend to be so much above anybody else. But you belong here just the same as anyone. And if you make one mistake, my lady, you'll know all about it. You can go. What's your name? Turner. You better sit here. All right, Jerry. Hurry up. Welcome back to the delicious Now, you've got the candles folded in half. Now, you stitch up the sides. There must be exactly four stitches to the inch. Do you understand? When you've finished, take the bags up to Jane for inspection and more candles. <laughs> What did you say you were in for? I only wish I knew. <laughs> she says she wishes she knew. I'd be off to think you have got another Miss Innocent here. <laughs> well, she's not going to tell us. We might as well guess. The winner gets Miss Smith. Yeah. I guess she forgot to keep off the grass. No, I bet she forgot to get a license for her telly. My dear, us tops don't look at telly. It's too vulgar. <laughs> I bet our Lucy knows. Lucy, how did poor little Miss Innocent land in the lift? Who didn't you hear? She accidentally parted some old geese's hair with a candlestick. Oh. It's getting to be rough in this place, I'm telling you. Oh, you shouldn't go around doing things like that, my girl. Oh, God. <laughs> as cold as ice. Hey, Lucy, did your girlfriend ever have a cuddle in the back seat of a car? No, she cuddled up front with the chauffeur. Oh, I could do with a cuddle myself right now. <laughs> it's been so long since I've seen a fella, I wouldn't know what one looked like. Hey, Lucy, what does a fella look like? Ask Madam over there. She's an expert on fellas. Especially those belonging to other girls. <laughs> don't mind them. They don't mean any harm. Don't they? No. They're just having fun. A laugh. Then I wish they'd have it at someone else's expense. My name's Mary. I'm Anne. I know. You're the one who keeps on saying you didn't do whatever they said you did. I didn't. But I'm not asking you to believe me. If you say so, Anne, I believe you. How long have you been here? Four years. But I thought you could get out much sooner with good behavior. I did something serious. At least that's what they say. Didn't you? Don't know. I, I suppose I did. It's very vague now. But Matron says I'm going to get out soon. That's wonderful. I haven't seen my family for four years. They couldn't afford to make the trip to visit me. You don't know how I miss them. I've never wanted anything so much in my life than to go home. 
I'm sure you'll see them soon. How'd you like the mailbag room? It's no worse than the rest of this place. I didn't see you there. Work in the kitchen. I'm not much good at sewing. I wish I wasn't. My palm still aches. You'll get used to it. Everyone does. No. I know I never will. Sandra, too. Get your beds, girls, at once. Where'd you get the money from the church, poor box? Ha, ha. Hi, handsome. Hello, Claire. I hear your girl's in the nick. She was crazy to have anything to do with Lucy. Lucy's dynamite. And swears she never had anything to do with Lucy. Tell it to the Marines. I see. You don't believe it either? No, because Lucy told me she was going to pull that job with Anne. But Anne isn't a girl like that. She had a good job, everything she wanted. It takes more than a good job to keep yourself fixed up in the right sort of clothes these days. You don't seem to be doing too badly. I've got a new boyfriend. So what? Anyway, Anne wasn't keen enough on clothes to steal for them. You don't know much about dames, do you, Tom? Okay, fellas. Any of you 
you want breakfast, get washed, and then you stand at attention by the side of your beds in 20 minutes. Right? And, uh, if your beds aren't neat, I'm afraid you'll have to make them again. Okay. Well, I'll put there you know. I'll do him that, witch. You just gotta wait your turn. We've all got something to settle with Smitty. Stand to attention, everybody. That means you too, Turner. Oh, don't slouch like that, my girl. Yes. That's better. Well, what have you done to your hair? You look as if you've gone through a hedge backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Take her name, please, Saunders. Yes, Miss B. Morning, Sandra. You look clean and nicely turned up. I wish one or two of you would take the example of those who care what we do for them. Well, Turner, is that the way you make a bed? It was made properly, ma'am. It was made properly? Quiet. Remake it. And when it is done properly, you better stay behind and mop up the entire floor. So, uh, don't come in to breakfast till it's finished, Turner. Come on, girls. Breakfast, don't blame me if the body just goes in one wheel. Don't slouch there. You're lucky you didn't say anything. Uh, Never mind, then I'll give you a hand. It's all right, Mary, I'll do it. The minute I'm finished, I'm going straight up to Matron. No, don't. But Lucy deliberately got me into trouble. I know, but squealing on someone is the worst thing you can do in a place like this. It's a sort of unofficial rule. If you do, everybody will be against you. Everybody is already, except you. But it'll make things worse for you, Anne. Believe me, I know. She can't keep getting away with it. Anything else you might do. Anything. Any of the girls would forgive you. But knocking, telling on someone. None of the girls would ever forgive you for that. Even if it wasn't them you knocked on. All right, Mary, come along. Get along to breakfast. Finished. Mm, pretty quick. Another canvas, please. Oh, Lucy, what's your opinion of that? Well, it looks pretty sloppy to me. I've redone that bag seven times. You know it's all right. Oh, Lucy, I think I'll let you decide. No. I think I can okay it. You're deliberately picking on me. Do it again. Oh. Now stop it, stop it, both of you. I had just about enough of this. You're going up to see Matron. She started it. I saw you throw the bag in her face. Come along, up to Matron's office. That was teacher. Oh, I've only just started. I cannot accept any excuse for this disgraceful behavior. If you had any complaint, you should have gone to the workroom wardress. One isn't supposed to tell tales in prison, ma'am. This isn't a prison, Anne. It is to me. That's enough of that. I told you before that I will not tolerate such nonsense. I'm sorry because you seem a nice girl, 
but you will go into solitary confinement for two weeks and a number one diet. She can go in now. Yes, Matron. I didn't like that one from the moment I laid eyes on her, ma'am. Thinks herself above everybody else. Oh, she's no worse than the rest. In fact, I even rather like her. I expect she's having difficulty in adjusting herself to Wilsham. A dose of solitary confinement should help her adjust herself, ma'am. You're too cynical, Miss Smith. Our job here is to help to rehabilitate these girls, not to make life miserable for them. I waited for 25 years to be promoted matron of Wilsham, ma'am. I only just missed it. They chose you instead. But uh, I wanted to improve the place too, but in my way. I still think the old days were best when we could knock some sense into their heads. It only makes them harder. No, I prefer the modern methods, firmness and kindness. It, it's a step to helping them to rebuild their lives. Thank you, ma'am. Perhaps a fortnight in here will teach you how to behave yourself in future. You'll see. I've only been here a few hours, and already it seems like a lifetime. I heard I'd happened. It wasn't your fault. She always gets away with it. They're all like her, every one of those girls. They're not. You'd be surprised. They'll see through Lucy one of these days. I know I've been here longer than anybody. I've seen it happen before. It's hard to believe. Anyway, have you heard any more news about when you're going home? Matron says she might hear any day now. I'll write to you when I get out. Thank you. All right, love, you've been in here long enough. I'll be bringing all your meals, eh? See you later. Better, thank you, ma'am. I've just had a good meal. Oh, good. You may sit down. Thank you. I want to have a talk with you, Anne. You weren't very happy working with the other girls, were you? No, ma'am. You may remember when you first came here how we told you that we try to train girls in other trades or, if possible, let them continue with their own jobs. Yes, ma'am. I've been going through your files and I see that you were a secretary with an excellent speed for typing and shorthand. Did you like being a secretary? Yes, ma'am. Good. Well, then I'll come straight to the point. I need a secretary, Anne. How would you like the job? You mean working here with you? Well, there are two reasons. First of all, the practical one. I need a secretary and our budget doesn't allow it. And the second, this is in the nature of an experiment. An experiment? We've never allowed our girls to work in an office before. It's been thought that they mustn't be allowed near the files. But I think they can be. But why me? I mean, I've been in so much trouble. Well, that's another point. I feel I can help you if we work together. Well, whatever the reason, I'm very pleased. So tomorrow, when the other girls in your dormitory go to work, you will report here. Thank you, ma'am.
Very nice. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning, Miss Johnson. Good morning. Everything in order? Yes, thank you, Miss Smith. But wasn't it today that the Turnica was supposed to be let out of solitary? Oh, yes. But she's not coming back to work in here. Oh. No. Matron has chosen her to work for her. Well, I like that. Did you say something, Owens? Did you say something? Answer me. I'm not here. I've told you once before. Don't talk to me like that, you fat witch. <laughs> From now on. All privileges are revoked for one week for everybody. Oh. From now on, if one girl falls out of line, the rest of you have to suffer. Is that understood? Yes. yes. Come here, Owens. Owens! From now on, perhaps you'll learn to treat me with a little more respect. Take your hands out of your pockets. Both. Back to work, Owens. Thank you, Miss Johnson. Yeah, she's gone too far. One of these days I'm going to get that fat louse. And she's least expecting it. And you're not the only one. Well, you should have hit her back, Lucy. No, stupid. Can't you see that's just what Smitty wants? Well, if she wants it bad enough, she'll get it. I've had all I can take from her. You and all of us. A matron says anyone can come and see her when they've got a complaint. Sweetie, didn't you know? First you must go to Smitty and get her permission. What are we supposed to do? Tell her we want to complain to matron about her? Matron hasn't any idea what goes on in this dump. Oh, I don't care about Matron. All these screws stick together anyway. Do you think she'd do anything even if she knew? <laughs> Here's someone who ought to know all about Matron. Two weeks in solitary. And she gets rewarded. Perhaps she wasn't there the old two weeks. How do we know? Yeah. She could have been holding Matron's hand all the time. Perhaps Smitty recommended her. Heard about the job, eh? Congratulations. Thanks. Looks like we've got two of the same kind, dear. You lay off, Mary. All right, all right. These letters are beautifully tied down. You're doing a fine job. Thank you, ma'am. I can't think why you didn't stick to your career. Why did you get involved in the robbery? But I never was involved. No, Anne. I wasn't. Please, ma'am, you must believe me. Lucy Owen, she deliberately said I was with her, but I wasn't. I've never stolen anything in all my life. Anne, you must understand that you have to pay for committing a crime. It's a debt to society. It's all part of your rehabilitation. Yes? I see. Thank you. Your father is here to see you. You can go right down. Thank you, ma'am. You understand you're only allowed a few moments with your daughter, Mr. Turner? Very well. Oh, father! 
I'm so glad you've come. How are you getting on? Sometimes I think it's all like a dream. And then I wake up and find it never happened. Oh, why do I have to go through all this where I never did anything wrong? We'll do something, Anne. Now, come and sit down. As a matter of fact, Tom and I are working on something right now. Do you know a girl called Claire? She used to hang about the same cafe that you and Tom went to. No, I don't, I don't remember any Claire. She knows you. She told Tom that she'd seen you and Lucy together planning the robbery. But that's a lie. How can she say that? Perhaps she's the girl who was with Lucy that night and is trying to throw suspicion on you. Is that possible? Can you prove it? Well, that's what Tom and I are hoping to do. We haven't made much progress, but I'm seeing Tom tonight and he might have some news. Just try and be patient, my dear. We'll do everything we can. How is Tom? He misses you a lot. They won't let him visit you. I think about him so often. He's a fine boy, and He'd do anything for you. You're in love with him, aren't you? I thought you were. Sorry. Time's up. But my father's only just come, and I won't see him again for another month. I'm afraid the rules have to be obeyed. It's all right, Anne. Maybe I'll see you sooner than you expect. Well, take care of yourself. Try to be brave. You'll tell Tom I asked about him. Of course. Goodbye, darling. Come along. Listen, everybody. My parole's come through. I'm getting out next week. <laughs> I'm getting out. I'm going home. Oh, that's marvelous, Mary. I'm so glad for you. I'm so happy. I don't know what to do. I can't believe it. Oh, that's great, isn't it? Oh, I'd be glad to see Mary get a break. She's the best person in this whole damn place. I know. <laughs> Let's throw a party for her. Well, in the dormitory. Ah, they'd never let us. They won't know about it. Listen, we'll start after lights out. The screw only comes round once every half hour. We can start the minute she goes. What do you want to waste your time in a creep like that for? You just watch what you say about her. Mary's a good kid. And I'm not going to have anyone say anything against her. And she gave the kid out the party. Hey, maybe we'll get some of the kitchen girls to sneak some stuff out. You know, a cake or a pie or something. Listen, it's going to be a real party. And just for Mary. And don't forget, tonight, in the dormitory, after lights out. Mr. Tenner. Sorry I'm late. Miss Anne. How was Anne? Oh, not very happy. She sent you her love. Any news? No. Well, I've spoken to everyone who might know Claire, but none of them seem to know where she was that night. Oh, dear. Some say she went to the continent the night before the robbery and some the night after, but no one knows exactly. What about the money she's been flashing around? She says she got that from a new boyfriend. You think that's on the level? Could be. Or if she's the one, she could have sold some of the jewellery that was stolen. That wouldn't be easy. That stuff was pretty hot. A fence, maybe. She might have taken it to France or wherever it was she went and sold it there. Oh, too difficult. Why? Customs. And people do get things through, you know, Mr. Turner. If she got the stuff out of the country, we wouldn't be able to touch her. Well, what about that private detective you hired? No good. She didn't leave London by plane, so there's no way of proving when she went. Getting nowhere fast. What about a cup of coffee? Well, thanks. Yes. Okay, now, girls. Remember, keep it down, okay? Sheila, Sheila, stop the fire. 
fire. And he... Give it to the angel and keep next. Let's see. What's happening? Surprise! It's a party, love, for you. It's just my birthday. Oh, it's better than that, isn't it? Hmm? You're going out next week, aren't you, Mary? Look, <laughs> cold sausages and bread and sugar. I've got the cigarettes, oh, but you'll have to break them up. I'm sorry, love. I couldn't get you any cake, but this pie should do just as well. <laughs> I'm so happy I could dance. <laughs> oh, Mary. Why shouldn't we? Yes, yes girls, come on. Yes, let's get a dance. Come on. Come on, Mary. Do it well. Come on, Mary. 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 You get back to bed. Quiet! Get back to your bed. Well, Mary. Why are you carrying on like that, hmm? You've been here long enough. You know the rules about lights out? We, we were having a party. A celebration because I'm getting out next week. Getting out next week? Hmm, fancy. <laughs> I'd say you'd be celebrating here for about 12 months. Don't mean that. Come I... along with me, Mary. <coughs> you have been a silly girl, haven't you? After all we've done for you, too. Still, you've had your fun. We all have to pay for that. <coughs> Come along, Mary. <coughs> Wait, Jack. I don't want to hear another word from this dormitory tonight. Is that understood? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma now, Mary. Hi. Anne, will you do a copy of this for me? Please, ma'am, I'd like to explain about last night. Last night? What about last night? Well, business in our dormitory. Oh, yes. I, I read Miss Smith's report that the girls have been awake long after lights out. Is that all it said? Yes. Well, I decided that the wardress's reprimand was sufficient punishment. Well, what about Mary, ma'am? Mary? Yes. Oh, well, if, if she was in it, we'll overlook it. You mean she will go home next week, after all? Of course she will. Why not? She's had a wonderful record here. Just do a copy of that for me, will you? Yes, ma'am. What do you think they'll do to her? Oh, I don't know. But if that Smithy lays one finger on her, I'll... I'll do for her. Yeah. Terrible has happened. What? One of the girls, Mary, has hanged herself in the workroom. Um, telephone Dr. Baker at once. Exchange. Exchange. But all I did, ma'am, was to keep her in a cell overnight. A solitary cell? Well, I couldn't allow her to come back to the dormitory. But did she know that she was in solitary for only one night? I imagine so. I sent her back to the workroom this morning. But one form of punishment is meals and sleeping in solitary and working during the day. Mary knew this. She had no reason to feel that this was happening to her. Miss Smith, you must realize that a month's punishment would have overrun her release. It might even have caused the board to reconsider its decision. 
I just want to make clear in my own mind that nothing you said or did could have caused this. No, madam, I didn't. I quite realize that you have to act as you think fit, that you have to obey the rules and regulations. But there must be flexibility as befits the individual. Mary was such a sensitive and naive person. You knew that. I think leniency was called for. And I thought firmness was called for, ma'am. Of course, I'm sorry, terribly sorry. But Mary was causing a disturbance. I did my duty as I saw it. Oh, I know that I can't hold you personally responsible, Miss Smith. I know that one can't predict these things. But Mary was so looking forward to going home. How am I going to break it to her parents? What shall I say? She might just as well have done it with her own ass. Oh, Mary, she never harmed a soul. It was Smithy's fault. Well, you're going to stand there and let her get away with it? Look what she did to me. I say, let's get her. But how? She'd never show her miserable face in We'll here. drag her out, all of us together. You said you'd get Smitty if ever she touched that kid. Well, she killed her, didn't she? Come on here, you crowd. Come on! It's Smitty. Who's with me? Me! me. Yeah. Right. Let's get her. This bus looks too late now. Come on! Come on. Come on. Yet you all took part in it. Somebody must have led it. Who was it? I suppose you don't know either. Who, me? Oh, no, ma'am. And you? No, ma'am. What about you? No, ma'am. Have you anything to say? So there were no leaders. You all decided at the same moment to run out of here together, smash everything in sight, and beat up Miss Smith. No one gave you the idea. It just came. The wardress who was tied up told me that you had no part in it, Anne. That you untied her after the others had gone. Yes, ma'am. Then you must have been here when it started. Yes, ma'am. Well, there must have been some loud talk. 
Somebody must have roused the girls to violence. Who was it? I see. You don't know either. No, ma'am. I don't think I need put into words how I feel about this disgraceful outrage. A large mob... A large mob beating a defenseless woman is the height of cowardice and brutality. I heard some of you yelling outside my office, but Mary's death that inspired this riot. A death which has grieved us all. But a death for which nobody can be responsible. Mary's tragedy has been an excuse for wanton violence and as nobody will tell me who organized it, I have no choice but to punish everybody here. The one exception in this dormitory will be Anne, who had the good sense to take no part in it, and went to the aid of the wardress. Unfortunately, there are only two punishment cells here, and as none of you will tell me who the ringleaders are, I can't punish individual girls more than the rest. I shall therefore recommend a convening board of inquiry to investigate the reasons for this outrage. And if they're able to ascertain who led it, I shall recommend that the girls shall have the longest extension of their sentence that the law permits. All the girls in this dormitory, with the exception of Anne, will be put on a number one diet from now. When not in the dining room or at work, they will be confined to the dormitory without recreational, library or visiting privileges. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Miss Smith. This punishment will be for a minimum of four weeks, or longer if the board has not finished its inquiry. I'll do what I can to see that you learn a lot in the next four weeks. on her again. We should have finished her off when we had her down. Now she'll never let us forget it. I wish I bashed her harder now. I'd like to wring her bloody neck. It was worth it. Thanks, Anne, for not knocking. What do you want to thank her for? She hasn't lost no privileges. Wait and see what she says when she gets back to Matron's office. Anne. Yes, ma'am. There is a film show in the reception hall in about five minutes. You are to go to it. I'd rather stay here if you don't mind, ma'am. You have been ordered to go to it. And the rest of you are not to leave the dormitory without permission. Is that understood? Yes, yes, yes. ma'am. Come along, Anne. See what I mean? But she still didn't knock. She will. You wait. She will. Am I to understand that you are asking to be treated the same as the other girls for the next four weeks? Yes, ma'am. I feel I'm just as responsible for the riot as they are. But I don't see why. You didn't go with them. You helped the wardress. But I didn't try and stop them. And I also know who the ringleaders are. And who were they? I'm sorry, ma'am, but I can't tell you. You mean you won't tell me? Yes, ma'am. Well, I'm fully aware of the unwritten code amongst you about not telling on each other, but in this case, somebody was hurt. Deliberately, viciously beaten up. It was no harmless escapade. A pretty harmless little girl hanged herself because of one of your wardresses, ma'am. I'm sorry. I'm afraid I have no sympathy for Miss Smith. Very well, then. You leave me no choice. From now on, the same punishments given to the other girls will apply to you. You will continue to work here, and that's all. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Turn up. Did you tell Matron the name of the ringleaders? No, I didn't. Ma'am? Ma'am. Well, then, you better tell me right away. Turn up. I want those names.
and I'll get them out of you sooner or later. One of these days, you and Matron won't be quite so cozy. <laughs> That's the day that I'm waiting for. Get about your work, Turner. Take it up there, will you? Yes. <clears throat> hey, you know that girl, Anne? She asked Matron to take away all her own privileges. She what? She said she was as much responsible for the riot as anyone. Well, be quiet, did you? Nicholas. Don't be daft, of course not. She just shown up. She up. You see. Come on, come on, stop dawdling there. what happened in the matron's office. I'd just like to say that I appreciate you not squealing. I've only got six more months to go and, well, I could have got a further six. Thank you very much. That's all right. I'm sorry about all those other things, too. I guess I just had you wrong. Look, I've got some friends on the outside. They told me how you happened to be in here. About being framed, I mean. Who told you? Never mind. I just know that it wasn't you who was with Lucy. Was it a girl called Claire? Look, I don't knock on anybody. But if you've got somebody outside, somebody you can trust, tell them to go and talk to dear old Moran. Who's he? I'm not saying anything more. Just tell somebody outside what I told you. My father will be here for another month, and I can't put it in a letter, so I can't have that. Looks like you two will be holding hands next. I'm going out now. Uh, when you finish typing those letters, just put them on my desk, will you, Anne? Yes, ma'am. I don't think it's raining, so I won't need my Mac. I shan't be back until late. Yes, ma'am. I'll see you in the morning, then, Anne. Goodbye, ma'am. Goodbye. Oh, um, Miss Smith, I wanted a word with you.
I told you the sort of girl she was. Hello? Is that the police station? Oh, this is the matron of Wilsham. One of our girls has escaped. She's a Londoner, so she's probably heading there. This is her description. Good night, Tom. Good night. Good night, Tom. Good night, Tom. Good night, Tom. Good night, Gladys. Hello, Tom. Anne, what are you doing? Wilson's the easiest place in the world to get out of. But, Anne, if they catch you... Don't worry, I'm going to give myself up after I do something. What? I'll tell you all about it in a minute. Look, sit down. Are you glad to see me? Of course I am. And you don't know how I've missed you. Oh, it's terrible being cooped up there. You know, your father and I have done everything we can. I know. That's why I escaped. I think I'm onto something. What? One of the girls in Wilsham, she told me something she said would help prove my innocence. A about Claire? I'm not sure. I couldn't pin her down. But she knows Lucy framed me. And she said I want to tell you to get in touch with someone called Dear Old Moran. Dear old Moran? That's all she'd say. Do you know anyone by that name? No, I, I don't. From the way she said it, I'm certain this Moran knows something. And if there is such a person, I'll find him. I must go now. Oh, not, not right away, Anne. But they've got the police out looking for me, and I don't want to cause any more trouble than I have to. I'll go with you. No. If you get seen with me, they might make it difficult for you. I'm only going to the nearest police station. But, Anne... Oh, please do it my way, darling. If you get arrested, they'll, it'll only make it worse for both of us. Anne! I thought she was in the nick. Look, you forget you've seen her. <laughs> You'd be surprised how bad my memory is at times. Sam? Do you know of someone called Dero Moran? Why, have you got something hot you want to get rid of? What do you mean? Well, that's Moran's business. If I didn't get you? Well, Moran's a pawnbroker. He's a doddering old codger with a little shop near the Portobello Market. I'm beginning to see a, a fence. Well, sort of. Although he doesn't know it himself. <laughs> well, how do you make that out? Well, what I said. He's so old and doddery, he trusts everyone. Sir? So, if you've got something to get rid of, you bring it to him, if he likes your face, he takes it and asks no questions. He thinks everyone's as honest as he is. That's why the spivs call him dear old Moran. I tell you, he's the crook's friend in need. I can't tell you how disappointed I am in you, Anne. All the girls here are in a position of trust because this is an open institution. And after all we've done to try and help you, to abuse that trust. I had to leave, ma'am. But why? Why can't you tell me? I suppose for the same reason that you wouldn't tell me who led the riot. Yes, ma'am. Well, I shall have to punish you. Running away from here is just as much a crime as stealing my raincoat. I'm afraid your sentence will be extended. Until your case is heard, you will be in solitary confinement. Is that understood? Yes, ma'am. I want some information about a customer of yours who may have come in in the last couple of months. Oh, I've got lots of customers. Wouldn't say I remember any particular one. Well, this is a young girl, uh, about 19, pretty good looking. I always remember pretty faces. Wouldn't say I remember this one you describe. Well, she was probably pretty well dressed, a bit flashy, and, and, and she pawned a lot of jewelry. Oh, you... Surely you don't mean the heiress? The heiress? Oh. That's a sad story. Her folks died and she inherited the family jewels. Said she had to pawn them temporarily to get some ready cash. That sounds like the sort of story she'd use. Look, have you still got this jewelry? Yes, of course. I'm holding them for her. Wouldn't want to sell anyone's family heirlooms, would you? Got them right here. I'll 
I'll check the ticket number against my ledger and I'll, I'll tell you her name. Uh, that's probably phony. Phony? She's a lovely girl. Struck me as very sincere. Yeah, you'll find out how sincere she is. If you check that jewelry against the police list of stolen property. Stolen? She's an heiress. She's no more an heiress than I am. Look, you check that list. You'll find that every piece of that jewelry checks up with jewelry stolen from a uh, place. It can't be stolen. I'm no fence. Said she had to pawn them temporarily to get some ready cash. Uh, they are all here. And she told me these were the family jewels. Don't you think it would be a good idea to telephone the police and tell them what you found? I'd better, hadn't I? Until now, I disbelieve the rumors I heard about your behavior. I take full responsibility because I trusted you implicitly. I now find these rumors were true. I'm afraid I shall have to suspend you. No, ma'am. I shall not be suspended. I am leaving Wilsham. I understand. I'm telling you, I've never seen this character before in all my life. She's the one, Inspector. She's the one. Never forget a pretty face. He's lying. He's lying, I tell you. All right, all right. Then I think I've got somebody else who will support Mr. Moran, a friend of yours. We brought her here all the way from Wilsham. Wilsham? Hello, Inspector. You two have met, haven't you? Yeah, we know each other slightly. Hello, Lucy. Hello. This is the girl who pulled the Simpson Crescent job with you, isn't it, Lucy? Huh? No, I told you. It was the other girl, Anne. And how is it that she came to have the jewels that were stolen from the house? Who says she has? Not has, Lucy. Had. She's pawned them. The old devil was lying. I never pawned, pawned them. them. Yes, all of them. With Mr. Moran here. Why, you loath... You were supposed to wait till I got out. We were going 50-50. Oh, why do you think I saved your rubbish? Well, I would have given you half. Oh, you dirty little... Ah! Ah! She's the one! She's the one! Stop that! She's the one that was with me! Man, do something. Look at this. Stop it, stop it. Stop it. Thank you, Matron. Well, goodbye and good luck to you. 